In a small canyon in South Napa Valley lies one of the original Pinot Noir producers for the area. Join us as we meet Elkhorn Peak Cellars. Well, thank you so much for joining me, not only at your winery, but also at your home. Thanks, Shannon. And now you've been here for over 30 years. We have. We've been in this uh, location growing grapes since uh, the early 80s. And what brought you here? Well, we in the early 80s, we bought some property, this ranch up in Napa. Um, had no idea about growing grapes or anything like that, but decided we were here. Maybe we would uh, try our hand at growing grapes, so we put a couple of uh, acres of grapes in in the early 80s, the first vineyard in this area. And then it kind of took off from there, and here we are today. And Jameson Canyon, at that time, there was no vineyards planted for Pinot or any vineyards at all at that time, correct? No That's vineyards correct. at all. Uh, Jameson Canyon is the south area of Napa Valley. It really wasn't recognized as a premier grape growing region. Of course, the Carneros region was, so we were kind of pioneers in that stage, and we put some Pinot, uh, Pinot Noir, some Chardonnay out here, and it grew very, very well. We were very happy, and now the whole area is totally planted out. It's, it's recognized as a, a very conducive area to grow Pinot Noir and, and Chardonnay in the Napa Valley. Absolutely, and while we're on that topic, I mean, can you tell me a little bit more about what is it about this microclimate that makes it so conducive for those two varietals? The main thing is our proximity to the bay. We're about 30 miles to the San Francisco Bay as the crow flies. Um, what, what that means is that we get, uh, we're heavily influenced by the marine environment. So in the morning we get fog here, it warms up, afternoon bay breeze is cool at night. Uh, so the microclimate is, is definitely the number one variable that, that kind of sets us apart from the rest of the Napa Valley. And the other thing, in my opinion, that's uh, quite conducive to the ability to grow good grapes here is the soil type we have here. The soil we grow in, it's called a Fagan series soil. It's the only place in the Napa Valley this particular soil is found. It's not really a good soil. It's a marginal soil, clay loam. So the vines, they're not big, uh, vigorous vines. They're kind of stunted, uh, low yields, but very intense flavors. So when you were ready to jump into making wine with your grapes, how, how did you find your winemaker? Actually, the winemaker found us. Uh, Kent Rasmussen, who's our winemaker, who's been making our wine since day one, uh, he had a ranch out in the Carneros district and he he put a flyer in our mailbox that he had been dri driving through this uh, canyon on his way to Davis where he was educated. He always thought that we could grow good grapes out here. So he made a deal with us that if um, you know we gave him the grapes, he would give us half the wine. And that was in 1987, I think it was. And he made wine for us the first year and we were very, very impressed. And it kind of just rolled from there and here we are today and Kent still is making our wine. and he's. We're the only uh, winery in the valley that he makes wine for. And we love Kent's winemaking style. He has a very hands-off style. Mm -hmm. um, he really lets the fruit speak for itself in the glass, so we really appreciate that. Yeah, Absolutely. he does a good job. Yes. He really does. Now, your production is extremely limited. You don't find your wine in stores or restaurants. It's all direct to your wine club and consumers. Yes. Tell me more about your production and why you keep it so small. Uh, we keep our production levels so low. We have our little slice of heaven in Napa here. Um, we grow it to its fullest and uh, we utilize the land. Just found that this is a great balance for us. Um, we're able to keep the production um, limited to family uh, at this level and um, we just make outstanding wine. That's our focus, not volume. Now on kind of a fun side note, I've noticed in the tasting room and your own personal collection of slot machines. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, there are a lot more things in life just to growing grapes and making wine. And I'm kind of a hobby oriented guy. So one of my main focuses that I really get a lot of pleasure out is antique slot machines. I've been collecting them for 40 years. I repair them, restore them, do all that kind of stuff. It just kind of gives me another outlet to channel my energies at. Antique slot machines, antique cars, and good wine. 
what else can you ask for? He's it's all good. He's also a master gardener. I mean, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Is around here. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do all of the the landscaping I and do. everything? Or, wow. I do, but I get great pleasure out of that. The, people say that's a lot of work. To me, it's not work. It's fun. I enjoy it. Well, it's apparent that. because it's stunning here. And a lot of time when I'm doing it, I've got a little glass of wine there. I'm drinking that <laughs> Well, too. yes, you're testing. You're <laughs> testing. <course>. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm testing out the products. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me here today. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a beautiful spot. So cheers. Thank to you, Thanks, Shannon. Shannon. Enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah. Cheers. Cellar Angels is so honored to bring you this authentic story about a family-owned ultra-premium winery. Order yours today and you'll see what we mean. Thank you for your support.